These Sony QD OLED rumors just keep popping up. The latest one being a news report from Korea listing Sony as a customer of Samsung Display's QD OLED panels. This is not the first time Sony has been cited as a buyer of this next generation OLED display technology from Samsung Display. But I have been ignoring these rumors because Sony has traditionally been quite conservative in adopting new display technologies, especially from third party vendors. For example, the Japanese brand took a full four years after WRGB OLED TV was introduced before launching its first big screen OLED television in 2017. And the company doesn't even sell a mini LED television in 2021 when most of its LED LCD rivals have done so. But with articles after articles listing Sony as a buyer of Samsung Display's QD OLED panels, perhaps there's some truth in these rumors after all. Furthermore, a supposed list of Sony's 2022 OLED TVs has been doing the rounds on Chinese forums, and the flagship series is meant to be the Sony A95K, which comes in two screen sizes, namely 55 and 65 inches, strongly pointing to the use of Samsung Display's QD OLED panels, given that only 55 inch and 65 inch QD OLED panels are available at mass production. With MMG or multi model glass technology, allowing three 65-inch panels and two 55-inch panels to be cut from an 8.5G mother glass. Considering that mass production of QD OLED panels only started this month, I'm not sure if Sony or Samsung Electronics will have more than a handful of prototypes to show at CES, because they still need to assemble the televisions, test them, and whatnot. One possible scenario would be for Sony to launch its QD OLED televisions not at CES, but sometime in autumn during the second half of 2022. Sony has formed for a fall TV launch every other year. I vividly remember the Sony ZD9 or Z90 in 2016, and also the Sony A9F and Z9F unveiled in New York back in 2018. Those were the days where we could fly anywhere without having the pleasure of a short swap before or after. Talking of which, this year's Sony A90J was apparently intended to be launched as the Sony A9H during the second half of 2020. But of course, the COVID pandemic put paid to that, which was why its introduction was delayed until CES 2021. So, in 2016, we have the backlight master drive from the Z9D. In 2018, we have the first master series TVs. In 2020, we are originally meant to have the Brava XR processor, so in 2022, we could have the first Sony QD OLED television. In fact, the more I say it out loud, the more I'm beginning to believe it myself. <laughs> now, assuming that Samsung and Sony will both launch QD OLED TVs next year, what would be some key features that may persuade you to choose one over the other, even when they are both using the same QD OLED panel? With Sony's QD OLED, you should get support for Dolby Vision, the most widely available dynamic metadata HDR format which Samsung has continued to shun so far. Sony may also draw its skills and experience from designing the Bravia A90J to put a metallic heatsink on its upcoming QD OLED television, allowing for even higher peak brightness and less risk of permanent OLED screen burn. On the other hand, Samsung's QD OLED should have a separate One Connect box potentially allowing for a thinner chassis and also more flexible installation in your home environment. Recent Samsung televisions are also unique in permitting motion interpolation in game mode at the slight expense of input lag, which may appeal to some gamers who would prefer smoother motion from 30 FPS games that would look more stuttery owing to OLED's near instantaneous pixel response time. One thing's for sure though, these QD OLED televisions won't start off cheap, simply because yield is still painfully low as mass production is ramped up. According to the Korean news portal etnews.com, immediate yield as of end of November was 50%, which was higher than the 33% reported by eDaily Korea which I covered last week. Perhaps the discrepancy can be explained by the fact that 76% of all statistics are made up. Anyway, initial estimates have placed the price of a Samsung QD OLED television at more than 10 million Korean won, 
which if we search on Google, converts to more than 8,000 US dollars or more than 6,000 Great British Pounds. Even if you are made of money, you would probably think twice before spending this kind of dosh on a first generation product. Not when you can buy a WRGB OLED television for less than half the price. So I certainly hope that these QD OLED prices come in cheaper than initially estimated. One TV I know is definitely going to be more affordable is LG's upcoming 42-inch C2 OLED which has been leaked online. So go watch my coverage video here.